Okay, welcome to the Thailand International Mathematical Olympic Mock Examination 2001 to 2002. This is for the student of primary six. And this paper consists of 30 questions separate into five different topics, logical thinking, arithmetics, number theory, geometry, and finally, combinatorics. And you have 90 minutes to finish this paper. This is just the same as the real examination. So just one thing to remind you is that you have only three minutes to finish each question. So time is of its essence. And if you have no idea how to solve the question at the first glance, it, it, is, it is better for you to just skip the question and go to the next question. Please do not just, I know that some students would like to finish this question one by one, starting from question one or until to the, the last question. But it is not advisable for you to do that because time is of the essence. You have only three minutes to finish each question. So if you do not know how to solve a question in the first glance, you maybe it's better for you to just skip the questions. Okay. So without further ado, let's go. Okay, so now the now the the date of the of the real examination will is is actually announced in the home, in the web page of the of the of this of the of this of this competition. So you may you may want to look back into the homepage for further details. Okay. So let's go to the first question. Okay, find the average of the following number. Now what is the meaning of average? Average means we add all this number together and then divide it by the number of terms. Is the total divided by the number of terms. So all we need to do is to find out the total. All we need to do is find out the total because we know that in this case, because there are eight numbers. So we already know that the number of terms is eight. So all we need to do is just sum, sum them all. Now, by summing it all, you can, of course, you can try to sum it directly, but it is not advisable because these numbers are big. Instead, you should try to think of all this number as 2000 plus or minus some number. So for example, the, the first number is 2000 plus 20. For our second number, it will be 2000 plus 22. For our third number is 2000 minus 13. Now notice that one 1987 is 2000 minus 13. And for our fourth number is 2000 plus 21 but, and then it will be plus 47 minus 8 again 2000 minus 8 is 1992 and then this will be plus 4 and then this would be plus 35. So instead of adding all this 2000 again and again and again and again and again instead we would like to add this simpler numbers Okay, so what's the sum of this? What's the sum of all this eight number? Plus 20, plus 20, 21, and then minus 13, minus eight, and so on. Now you can easy can you can easy see that you can cancel some of them. For example, so minus 13, minus eight, and can be canceled with our minus 21. So all you need to do is just sum all the others. And by this, for example, if our 22 plus our 47 plus our four, it would be equal to 69 plus four, which is 73. 73 plus 45 is 108 plus 20, and hence it would be equal to plus 128, plus 128. So you know that the sum consists of two parts. One is the base, which is our, our eight, 2008 of the 2000, this is the base of it. 
equals one six zero zero zero, and then you need to add one two eight of it. So the total will be one six one two eight. So if we try to divide them, our average will then will now becomes our one six one two eight divided by our eight. So it will be equals to two zero one six. Two zero one six. And two zero one six is our answer. Oh, this is one hundred and one hundred and thirty. No, it's not one hundred and thirty. Why? It, it, why? Yeah, two plus seven plus four plus five six plus also two plus seven plus this is equals to this is equal to twelve. Wait, what? Oh, oh yes, this is equal to twelve. Yes, so. And then it will be equals to 16, yes. And then add two, it will be equals to 18, right? Yes, 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 definitely. So the sum will be one to eight, right? Okay, so now again, well, please, please do. Now you, you need to take time to check your answer, okay? So this is our question one, okay? So let's go to our second question. Our question number two. There are 23 pieces of red chopstick, nine pieces of green, and 11 pieces of orange. Mix it together. If you want to get two pairs of chopstick, red chopstick, and one pair of orange stopped chopstick in the dark, at least how many now? Here are the keywords. Whenever you see a question like this, it gave you a situation and then it will ask you how many, how many things you need to do at least, okay? This is always asking you to use the principle of least favorable. Principle of least favorable. Now, this is always the case. Whenever you see a question which asks you at least something, something, this is always the principle of least favorable. Now, what is the principle of least favorable? Is to, con or yes, this is the worst case scenario. Yeah, this is another way of saying this is the worst case scenario. Yeah, again, very, very good. Thank you. Worst case scenario. Now, how? Now, I, I, I don't have space to do this. So, so let me write it down. Is to, is to consider, oh, I, I still do not have space. Now, maybe, maybe, I, maybe I just use a smaller text. Okay, if you, if I just use a smaller text. Okay. What do you mean by principle of least favorable is to consider the consider the opposite. Consider the opposite of the things we want. And too big. Okay. Okay, so now what do you mean by that? Because in here we have two conditions that we want, we would like to, we would like to talk about. We have two pairs of red chopsticks and one pair of orange chopsticks. Well, what's the reverse of what's the opposite of this? What's the opposite of this? The opposite of this is not two pairs of red chopsticks and a pair of orange chopsticks. Is that is no free no for red, right? No for red, because 
two pairs of red chopsticks means four red chopsticks. Okay. Or now it you, it doesn't need to need that both of them is is true or only one of them is true is okay. Or you do not have no two orange. Okay. This this statement is the direct opposite of this of the statement in green. This is the direct opposite of the statement in green. The whole thing. Okay. Because we want two pairs of red chopsticks, we want four or more red chopsticks and one, two orange chopsticks. Okay. So what's the reverse of it? Is either you do not have four red or you do not have two orange. So this is the direct opposite. But now, once you think about this, then you may find that it is much easier because we can separate them into two cases. One is the first one, no four red. The other is four hour, no two good orange. Now let's consider what is the, what's, now, excuse me, could you please stop drawing on the screen? Now let's let's talk about it in the first cases. For our first cases, it do because it is no four red, which means that all the red can have at most three. But the red have twenty three, so we have at most three. So you can you can get as many green as you want, and you can get as many orange as you want. So it means that it has at most. E plus nine plus 11, it will be equals 23. Now again, excuse me, please do not draw on the screen unless I ask you so. Uh -huh. This is the first condition. By the way, uh, okay. Now for our, for our second condition, for our second condition, no two orange, no to orange, it would be at most, because there are no two orange, so you can take as many red as possible, 23 red or nine and nine green. And because there are no two orange, so you can take at most one orange, right? So it will uh, combine together will be 33. So which means that if you want this to happen, if you want our orange condition to happen, you either can take at most 23 or you can take at most 33. So the, what's the largest of it? The largest of it's it 34. is 34. It's 34. Yes, it's 34. 34. Because it says one pair of orange yes, chocolate. Oh, wait, stop, stop, one stop. Pair. Okay, okay, yes, I yes, yes. This. Please, please, please. Let me finish it first, okay? Let me finish it first. Now, but in here, now in here, some some of you have say that it is, yeah, yes, the two orange is for a pair of orange, yes, okay? Yes, it's for a pair of orange, but notice that in here, all we need to do is to talk about how it, it will satisfy these conditions. But this condition is the direct opposite of what we want, okay? So it would be at most, at most 33. No, please do not, now, please let me finish it first before you, before you discuss. Although your answer is correct, your answer is correct, but please let me finish first, okay? Now, notice that in here, we consider the opposite thing. So it means that if uh, the opposite is true, then it has at most 33. So what is the opposite of this statement? We now want to consider the opposite of this statement. The opposite of this statement must be at least 34. So that's why 34 is the answer. Now again, let me, re let me 
repeat it one more time. The principal least favorable or the worst case scenario is to consider the opposite of the things that we want. Now, given the opposite of the thing, given the opposite of the, of the things that we want, we conclude that if we want the orange case to be true, there, are, there can be at most 33 chopsticks. There can be at most 33 chopsticks. So, the, so in the worst case scenario, we can pick 33 chopsticks and we still do not get the green condition that we want, right? So it means that if we have more than 33, so it, it will be at least 34 chopsticks, then we will satisfy our green condition. This is the principle of, work of the least favorable. This is the principle of least favorable. We consider the direct opposite of it. We find out the things that it can have at most. And the direct opposite of it will be the things that will satisfy our green because our green and the orange is direct opposite to each other. Okay. So this is our, our second question. Now, because the principle of least favorable is a little bit abstract, so I have spent some time to discuss it. Okay. So let's go to our question number three. It requires 20 minutes to cut a piece of wood into six section. If the time required to cut each section is the same and you cannot stack your wood and cut them together. So what is the number of, of times that you need to cut a wood into 30 seconds? Now, this is a tricky question. This is not hard, not hard as, as if it is question number two, but it is tricky. Think about it. If you want to cut oh. a piece of wood into six sector, how many times do you need Five. to cut that wood? Yes. Five times. Because you divide by five is four. four yes, times, 12, 12, that's because it you only need to cut minutes. five times. You don't need In to order cut to six make times. It, you know, that would create seven sections. Yes. So, okay. So if you want to cut a wood into 30 sections, in, in this case, it would only need to cut it 12 times. Okay. And to divide by five times 12. Uh, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you want to, if you would like to answer this question, you may you may want to uh, answer it on the chat room. Okay. So now let's go back to the, the first part of this paper or of this question, because you cut it five times. How many minutes do you, do you spend? You spend 20 minutes. So each cut requires how many times? requires 20 divided by five and hence it will be four minutes. So we know that you cut each, each time you cut, you spend four minutes of it. Okay. Okay, let's go. So by this, you can immediately get our answer. You can immediately get our answer. So it will be, if you cut 12 times, what the times you take, it, it would be equal to four times 12 and it will be equal to 48 minutes. So our answer will be equal to 48. Okay, so the answer is equal to 48. Okay, so let's go to the next question. Let's go to the next question. Question number four. There are some chicken and rabbit and the number of chicken is four times the number of rabbit. They have this length in total. How many chickens are there? So again, we can, now we can, because the number of chickens is four times that of rabbit. Now we can rewrite it. We, we can group all this, we, we can group four chickens with one rabbit. Now we can group them together. So it means that for every, every five animals, how many legs are there? They have how many legs? These five animals, four chickens and a rabbit, 
they will have four times five, four times two because they have four chicken, right? They have four chickens, right? They will be equals to four times two plus the four from the rabbit. So it will be four times two oh. plus four is equal to 12 legs, okay? So every five animals, it will have four legs. I will have 12 legs. But how many legs are there in here? It has 108 legs. So 108, how many groups are there? So 108 legs means that if we divide it by our 12, 12 legs per group, it means it will have exactly nine groups. But what is the meaning of nine groups? It means it will have nine times five animals or in other words, 45 animals. Okay, well, now, of course, in here, it does not ask for animals. It instead, it asks for chickens, but every group will have four chickens, right? It, or every group have four chickens, so it will have 36 chickens, okay? So 36 is our answer. Okay. So we group them, we group the animals in group in 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 each in different groups because we know that every for every rabbit they will have four chickens. So we group a rabbit and four chickens together. So we know that with for all this animals they will be formed a they will be having the exact the integral numbers of groups and hence we can we can we can find out how many groups are there and then we use the group to deduce how many chickens are there okay so this is question number four now let's go to question number five now let's go to question number five amy is reading a a novel now Amy is Amy is reading a novel. A novel she read one pages in the first day, two on the second, three on the third, until the total page you read is a multiple of sixty. How many pages did we read until then? So which. In this case, we want to find the we want to find the the case in which the total lump, total pages is a multiple of sixty. So, what is the total pages, right? The total is equals to our uh, yeah. This is one plus two plus three plus four, and then add up to some numbers. Okay, we don't know this number, but we do know that. Well, we do know that this, according to the Gauss theorem, according to Gauss theorem, it will be equal to n times n plus one divided by two, right? This is the Gauss summation. Okay, this is the Gauss summation. So now, once you, once you compute that, then so we know that this must be equals to a multiple of of 60. So, or, and in other words, we want a number n such that n times n plus one is a multiple of 120. So what's the smallest number, number such that it happens? The smallest number it happened is when n is equal to 15, okay? So we know that n is equal to 15. Now, now you may ask, wait, wait, how how can we how can I find this number? Well, this is this is not difficult because you, in fact, the smallest multiple of 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 120 is 120 itself. But 120, 120 is exactly equal to 15 times 16. Right? So you immediately see that n must be the, the smallest number will be equal to 15. And hence the total number, the, our total is will be exactly 
our total is equal to our n times our n plus one divided by two uh, equals to 60. So 60 is the total number of pages. Okay. Yeah. So this is question number five. Now let's go to question number six. Let's go to question number six. Now, again, in here we have some pattern, three, eight, 23 and 68. What is the next number? What is the next number? Now this number, this, this is difficult. This is really difficult. And let me, let me, let me state the, the laws, Mister? the pattern. Yes. Can I show something? Uh, maybe later, maybe later. Now okay. let me finish it first. So because this is three to eight is actually is, is we want to multiply by three and then minus one. Three multiplied by three minus one is equal to eight. And then eight multiplied by three minus one is equal to 23. And 23 multiplied by three minus one is equal to 68. So the finally the rules will be 68 multiplied by three minus one, it will be equals to our final answer. And hence our final answer will be equals to our 68 times three, 68 times three is equals to what? 204 minus one and hence our answer is equals to 203, okay? So our answer is equals to 203. So, so, okay, so now this is the end of our end of the, of the section of logical thinking. Is there any question for this six question? Is there any question for the six question? And Joseph, is, is that something that you want to draw so that you want to show all others? I know this book teacher, when I, Took the difference of the two numbers. It was like this. Okay, yes. Oh, wait. wait, wait, wait. Yes, 35, so. And then so, the what's next the next one. number? Why 55? They are different by 10, yes. And then five and twenty-five is different to twenty, and the and finally, uh, yeah, it should be sixty-five. But even then, this is very contrived, right? It really doesn't show the 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 the, the true true meaning of it because why 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 just five? Why five to fifteen to thirty-five to sixty-five, right? Because why why start from five? Uh, now, now, although that looking into the difference of number is very important for us to find the pattern, it is not the only way. And sometimes if, if we just give you this number, you may want to find a more direct way to, to state your difference, okay? Well, okay, so uh, someone says that, oh, someone says that it can show your solution to question five really quickly. Oh, for question five, the, the question is no. You just you just you for question five again. You just write down the total pages, because what is the meaning of the total pages? Now let me. The total is will be equals to the first one, two, three up until to some number n. I don't know because the end date. And we say that now we know that based on the based on our based on our Gaussian theory. The n, one plus two plus three up until n, it will be equal to n plus n times n plus one divided by two. But then we know that this must be a multiple of 60. Multiple of 60. So we want to ask, wait, what number of n such that this will be a multiple of 60? Which, if n times n plus one divided by two is multiple of 60, so which means that n times n plus one must be a multiple of 120 because we multiply both sides by, by two, right? But 120 is equals to 15 times 16. 
So of course, in that case, we know that our n must be our n can be can be equal to fifteen. So by by this, we know that this answer, uh, the total number, it will be equals to sixty. One add until to sixteen. So it will be equals it will be equal to sixteen, and hence this is our answer. Okay, okay. Is there another question? If no, then we will we will. It will go to. I, I will go to the next part. I will go to the next part. Okay, so let's go to the next section, which is our arithmetic. We want to calculate all this number. Find the values of this sum. I heard this. This uh. Okay. Find the value Wait. of this sum. Can I? Now, and um, if you have any question. May you may uh, you may ask it later during yeah. the end of this section. Okay, find the value of the sum. Excuse me. What do you, what what do you mean? Now here, this is called a. Oh yeah, sure. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, yes. This is something that I, I would like to like to like to mention it now. Now this is this this method is called the telescoping. I wish I, I don't know why this is called telescoping, but this is the this is the the name of the technique. Now telescoping or in is so some sometimes we say is term splitting. We split this. We split this rational number into its several different terms. For example, in for our first term, for our first term one or one times two over one over one times two, we can split this term into two parts. It's one over one, one over one minus one over two. For our second term, this term, this can be split into into one over two minus one over three. And so on and so forth. So for our third term, it would be equals to one over three times minus one over four. Now you can you can calculate it directly. You know we will you will see that each of these terms they are equal. Okay. So for our for our second last term, it would be equals to it will equals to one over one o one nine minus one over one one. O two zero, and for our final term, this term, this will be equals to our one one over one o two zero minus one over one o one o two one. Okay, now but in here you can see that all these terms they can cancel out because minus twenty and minus to one over two and plus one over two will cancel out. Minus one over three and one over three will cancel out. Okay, so uh, it's one over one minus one and over then one. And we will cancel one. cancel them out. The only thing that does not cancel out is the first and our one. last last term. One over one minus one over one thousand twenty one. Oh yes, yes. This is exactly as the as. In here, so it's one over one minus one over one over twenty one, and hence our answer is one over twenty divided by one over twenty one, and this is our answer. Okay, this method is called telescoping. We split the terms into into this part, and then we find out that most of them can be cancelled out. Okay, let's go to question number eight. Let's go to action number eight. Now find the value of this alternative sum. Okay. Find the value of this alternative sum, and now every time we see this, or because this is an alternative sum, it means that if we combine this term together, it will form a much smaller number. 
Now, if we combine this all together, if we combine this all together, so you can see what are the what are the value of each term. If it is 15 minus eight, it is equal to seven. 29 minus 22 is again equal to seven. This is also equal to seven. This is also equal to seven. So now here comes the, our answer. So it will be equal to five plus seven, plus seven, plus seven, up until the plus seven, and the finally plus and other seven. So as long as we know how many sevens are here, then we can find out the answer. Okay. As long as we know how many sevens are here and we, we can find the answers, but how many sevens are here? Now, in order to find out the, 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 the number of seven, we want to look back into the, this, this series. Now, if you just look at this or this number, you may want to ask, wait, why seven, right? Why seven? How, how, can, how can we find out the number of terms? So in here, we, you can see that all this, for all this term, for all this term from five to our, to our, now, and except the first term, for all this term from our eight, eight and 15 and 22 and 29, up until our final term, except the first term. They are all a so-called arithmetic series. Now, what is the arithmetic series? It's arithmetic series is a series which a neighboring number a neighboring number numbers have the same difference. So you can see you can see very clearly in here because for eight and fifteen their difference is seven, twenty two and twenty nine their difference is seven and so on. But also fifteen and twenty two their difference is also seven. So except the first term, all other terms are actually within a arithmetic series. So let us look into how many numbers are there for this arithmetic series. But for the number of are here, we can make use of the, of the equation for the number of series, number of terms for arithmetic series, it will be equals to our last term, last term minus our first term, and then divide the whole thing by our common difference. Now, normally we refer to as the as the CD, but in, in here we'll say just say that it's the difference. And then it will be, and then later on we would have to add one to indicate that the we have one more than this because we need to count the first term. So or if we try to do this, this will be two, two, one, one minus eight is equal to two or three divided by seven and then plus one. So two or three divided by seven, it will be equals to 29 plus one and it will equal to 30. So there are 30 terms here. Now, but it, it doesn't mean that they have 30 sevens in here. Instead, it has only 15 seven. Why? Because we combine each of these two terms into forming a seven. So there's only 15 sevens in here. So our answer in, in our question here is equal to five plus seven times 15, or in other words, five plus our 105, and hence it will be equal to 110. It is equal to our 110. Okay. So let's go to our next, um, next question, which is question number nine. Question number nine, find the values of this, of this, of this expression. Now, again, every time you want to compute the, the multiplication of a rational number, always remember to make all the, to make all this number, to make all 
rational is a so-called the 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 pseudo version of it. So we cannot have a number which have a carry integer. Make all rationals a pure a pure ratio. Now, what does that mean? It means that we need to convert them. We instead of having all this this number that carries an integer, now we want to transform it into a pure ratio. So the first term, three and a one six can be rewritten as 19 over six. Okay, so it will be 19 over six. Times 13. Times 13, yes. So the second term, two five over R, two. it is five over two, over two times, times five. five. And finally, the final term, it will be 16, 16 over, three. over three times 10. Yes, thank you. And if you would like to answer any any more of this question, you may want to, you may want to answer it in the chat room. Okay. Okay. So now, once we do, once we have done this, we can now we can now try to multiply them together and then get get the answer. So it will be nineteen. Now, in here, there's not much not much things that we can do about that. Not much things that we can do about this. So, uh, the one of the better way of doing this is try to combine these two first. We want to combine these two first. Now, if we want to combine these two, now, first of all, it will be 19 times 13, 19 times 13, which results in our answer equals to our 247. So it will be 247 over six. Now our final term, it will be 16 over three or 320 over three. Okay, so three to zero for over three. And then later on, combine two and then we add up the final one, which is 25 divided by two. Now we, we want to combine the green part first. If we combine the green part, what we get is the following. It now, now this is instead of three to, is 160 over three and hence it will be 320 over six. So if we add them together, so it will be equal to three, six, seven over six. Five, six, seven over six. But five, six, seven over six. Now, because five, six, seven is a multiple of three. So we can reduce it further. We can reduce it further. And hence our answer will be equals to one, eight, nine divided by two plus our 25 divided by two. And now after this, we add this together. So it will equal to 214 over two, or in other words, it will be equal to 106. Okay. Now, so this is one way of doing this. This is one way of doing this. Now, because of course, this is not the only way of doing this. This is not the only way of doing this. Another way of doing this is to use the distributive law to reform this answer. Now, what do you mean by that? Because in here, three and one six, it can be written as three plus one six and then multiply by 13, right? And the later is two plus one half and multiply by five plus our five plus one, one third times 10. But then if you think about it, you can now using the Swift law to actually find out each and every one of them by placing all the multiplication inside the bracket, right? So, so the first one will be three times 13 plus 13 over six plus our 10, our two times five plus our five over two plus our five times 10 plus our 10 over three. So we can collect all the integers together so the first term is 39, the second term is 10, the third term is 50. So we collect them all together. So all, all we get is 99. So it will be 99 plus the remaining is 33 over six plus our five of two plus our 10 over three. Now, of, 
of course we can we can further reduce it we can further reduce it because our 33 over 6 it will be equal to 1 over 6 plus 2 right 2 plus 1 over 6 and the second term is equal to 2 plus 1 over 2 and the final term is equal to 3 plus 1 over 3 so in other words it's 99 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 and hence it will be equal to 106 plus our 1 over 6 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 and hence it will be equal to 1 over 7 because 1 over 6 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 is exactly equal to 1. So this is another way of doing this. Now both ways is correct. Both ways is correct. Okay, so now let us go to our question number 10. Let's go to question number 10. Find the values of this of this of this expression. Now you can see that these two numbers are very close to each other. And the other two are also very close to each other. So we may find that so these two numbers are actually very similar. They are just different a very tiny bit. So let us write this tiny bit out. So instead of writing this, we let, let me write it in, in the following form. So it will be 25356 multiplied by our, instead of saying that it is our 131370, one, three, if we write it 1369 plus 1. And the second part, instead of writing 1357, we 3357, we write that it's 2356 times 1. And then we multiply it by 1369. Now, after we write it like this, we can use our distributive law to rewrite. Now, again, we want to place our multiplication into each and every terms of the bracket. So it will be 2356 times 1369 plus our 2356 minus our 2356 times 1369 minus 1369. Okay. So this is just by pure expansion, just by pure expansion. So, but now, but in here, now we can, yeah, it, it's just because we can cancel this part, right? We can cancel this part. This is why we say that these two numbers are very similar because the biggest number, they are actually this part and they can cancel each other. They are the same. So the final answer is two, three, two, three, five, six minus our 1369. So at the end of the day, it would be equals to 90, 987. And 987 is our answer. Okay. <laughs> so So let's go to the question 11. We want to convert these numbers into decimal. Now notice that in here, in this case, it is actually, <clears throat> it is actually strange because now this number cannot be written as a simple decimal. So what does this mean when, because if you try to divide it, you will find out that 38 cannot be divided by nine. 38 cannot be divided by nine. So what does that mean? It actually means that in here, the decimal actually means it is a infinite decimal. Or in other words, it is a, it is a so-called a recurring decimal.
So usually we will we will write now this is now in here well, let me introduce a concept which is called recurring decimal. Let's say something like this. Zero and one to three, but unlike our other now this is a decimal, but unlike other decimal, there are two star two dots on the top of it. Now what does that mean? It actually means that it is a decimal, but instead of a finite decimal, it is infinite. It, you just keep repeating the, the digit with, between these two decimal, the, between the two dots. Wait, isn't that different from, oh. But you just, we just keep on repeating the thing, the, the, the pattern in here. So this is called a recurring decimal or sometimes we call it a infinite decimal. This is a recurring decimal. Now, now it, whenever we write it is an in a recurring decimal, it is always interesting to say that a recurring decimal can always be converted into a rational number. Now the trick is to count how many terms are here. If you have three terms, all you need to do is just rewrite it such that the the, the, de the denominator is exactly equals to the denominator is exactly equals to the number of uh, number of nine of which you have turned you have in uh, as or digit. Okay, so if you understand this, then you can immediately see that this is the textbook definition, right? Which is exactly our textbook definition of a zero point three eight. 38, 38, 38, 38, 38, and so on and so forth. And hence, this is exactly equal to 0 0.38. And you have a two dot at the very top of it. We start from three and then end with eight. So this is the decimal that we want. How can we tie two dots on the exam, Peter? Yeah. Uh, no, How can we? Possible. Well, yes, yes, of like... course. <clears throat> of course, this is that this is possible. Okay, because the, you have answered that you can select it in the examination. Okay, you can answer. You, the, the, you can select the you can select the dot on the on the on the program. Okay, so now let's go to our final final part final part of our uh, of our. Uh, Arithmetic. So find the value of it. Now this one is now. I would like you to compare this to the to the arithmetic series of the in the previous ex exercises in the previous question. Recall that arithmetic series is that all neighboring number have the same difference. Okay. So let me rewrite it in here. A arith a arithmetic series is there is, is that all neighboring number, all neighbor, <laughs> all neighboring number has common difference. Now notice the keyword here is different. Notice the keyword here is different. But we, in here, in this question, instead of our sequence, this question, we will focus on something which is called a dual metric series. A dual metric series is just like our metric series. Again, it is all, not all neighboring number. But instead of common difference, they have the common ratio. So you can see that in here, our one fifth and one over 25, the, the denominator is just five times our denominator. So in, in other words, you just multiply the whole number by one, one over five. So again, for the next two number, one, our one, uh, one over 25, if we multiply the whole number by one over five, and then you will get one over one to five, and then so on and so forth. 
Now, this is what we call a geometric series. Now, in order for you to calculate the geometric series, let's call it number sum. So now let us find out what is, what's happening if we sum is divided by five. The sum is divided by our, by our common ratio, right? Then this will be equal to one over 25 plus one over one to five plus one over six to five plus one over three one to five plus one over one five six two two five plus finally now notice that our last term still need to multiply by five and if we multiply them what we have is the following what what we have is is the following is that our uh, one five six one five six two five multiply by five it will get is one over seven eight one two five okay but notice that well isn't this two parts so very similar no it's not just similar is they are the same they're exactly the same right so we can rewrite the sum as the following we can rewrite the sum as the form it will be equal to our number s minus our one over five but plus our final term is seven, eight, one, two, five. So by rearranging it, what we get is our S. Now we can we can subtract both sides by our by our S here. So what we get is the following. We get is our four S over five. It will be equals to our one over five minus one over five minus one over seven, eight, one, two, five. Now this would <coughs> this would be this would be hard to calculate, but you can you can try you can find it out. It will be one five six two four divided by seven eight one two five. But then all you need to do is just multiply both sides by five and then divide it by four. So what we get is the following: one five six two four divided by four. So we will be equals to our s is equals to our 3906 uh, 3906 divided by 15625 okay so in fact like the arithmetic series there are equations for this <coughs> for this for this kind of series the sum of the series but in here in here In here, I do not use that method. I do not use the equation because I know that some of you may not know the equation, may not be very familiarized with the geometric series, but because we know that because all neighboring number have the common ratio, we can immediately multiply the common ratio such that we can in, in, in start shifting the terms. And this is one of the ways for you to compute the sum of it. Now this technique itself is very useful, okay? So this is the end of part two of this of this paper. Is that a question? This is the end of part two. If no, let's then let's go to part three. Number theory. The remainder divided a positive integer by twenty two is is six. What's the remainder divided by four k minus seven by eight? Four k minus seven by eight. Now, what does this mean? Dividing a positive integer by two twenty two is six. Okay, so let us rewrite it. K divided by twenty two is equal to something. Now, well, we don't know what that thing is. Let's call it s, right? And then the remainder is six. Okay. But this we can rewrite this. We write this as the following. We know that our k can now be rewritten as twenty two s plus our six. Right. This is the remainder theorem. This is the remainder theorem. We can rewrite a division into a equation into a. We can rewrite our our division into a multiplication, and we get a a equal values of it. So now let us use this part. Let us use our remainder theorem and then substitute this k into just here 
So now let's see what is the value of our 4K, our 4K minus seven. So according to our, our theory, this our K is equal to 22S plus six. So it will be divided by seven and hence it will be equals to uh, minus seven. So it will be equal to 88S plus 24 minus seven and hence it will be equal to 88s plus our 17. <clears throat> but now here comes the question. What is this number when divided by eight? We, we want to divide by eight. Notice that this number, now our 88s itself is a multiple of eight, right? So if we divide it by eight, this part contribute nothing. So all we need to do is the 17. So, but 17 divided by eight is exactly equal to one. Remain, it has a remainder of one. So the whole number has a remainder of one. Okay. So this is the question, question 13. Okay, again, based on the remainder theorem, we can rewrite the, the, our information of K divided by 22 is, has a remainder of six into K is some multiple of 22, 22 S plus six. And then we substitute this K into our equation, into our equation, and hence we can rewrite our four K minus seven into 88 S plus 17. And we, after we divide this by eight, we know that the 88s, it will be equals to 11s. Now this is our quotient, which has nothing to do with our remainder. And, but the remainder is contributed only by the 17, but 17 divided by eight has a remainder of one. So the whole number will have a remainder of one. Okay. So let's go to our question 14. Let's go to our question 14. Our question 14, if a nine digit number 202138278 is divisible by seven. Now divisible seven is difficult. This is difficult to do. Now, how can we know whether some number is divisible by seven or not? It is so for that a free, so this is by making use of the so-called a free, free point So the three digit determinant. So what's the meaning of three digit determinant? It says the following. If this number, if this number is divisible by, if this nine digit number is divisible by seven. So if we try to add all the number in blue and then subtract it by all the number in green, We will get it. This number is also divisible by seven. This is the, the what there was in certain sense is very similar to the case of the sum of the digits for divisibility by nine. But in this case, the, the instead of dividing one by one, digit by digit, we divide it into three digits all together. So, but in here we we know that this this number will be equals well, or what does what does this look like? What does this look like? So it would be equals to our four eighty minus one thirty. So it will be equals to this should be equals to three fifty three fifty minus a is divisible by by seven. But this is strange, right? Because for three thirteen is divisible by seven all by itself. So which means that the only possible possible way for it to be also be divisible by seven is the is that our A is also divisible by seven. 
And then since a is divisible by seven, a is divisible, a is greater than, than, than five. So which means that our a must be equal to seven. So this is our answer. Now, if we do not have this part, if we do not have, now this part is here because it want to stop having our a equal to zero because a equal to zero is also one of the answer if we are allowed that a is less should can be less than five but after we have we constrain ourselves that our a must be greater than five then a equals seven is the only answer is the is the only answer Now let's go to question set question 15. Let's go to question 15. Find the la find the last digit of this of this of this multiplication. Now this is very difficult. But we, we know that the last digit can is only affected by the last digit of each of these terms of the multiples. Right? It can only affect it by all this all this last digit. So in certain sense, although it looks like it has it has 12 different numbers, all it do is just repeating, repeatedly multiplying four, seven, and nine four times. So their last digit is the same as multiplying four times seven times nine and four times. So what is four times seven times nine? What is four times seven times nine? Nine times seven is 63 multiplied by four. So it's, it, yeah, it gets a last digit as two. So it was equivalent to two, two to the power of two multiplied itself four times. So it has the last digit of- it's Six. Six, yes, six. So our answer is equals to six. Our answer is equal to six. Okay, let's go to our question 16. Find the number of all possible teacher, factors of, teacher, of one five. Four times two, it was eight, teacher. Excuse me? Four times six. Yeah, teacher, four times two, is it eight? Ah, uh, no, why? Because what does that mean? This means two times two times two times two. If we multiply them four times, this is the this is the this is the meaning of of our our index, right? Two to the power of four is two times two times two times two. We multiply it four times instead of two times four. So if this number is actually equal to sixteen, so the final the final digit is actually equal to six. Okay. Okay, so now let's go to our question 16. Find the number of all possible factors of 1539. Now, whenever we see a question which is which is about the number of factors or the sum of factors, the first step we want to do is just prime factorize the number. What do we mean by prime factorize? Prime factorization. In other words, we want to write our target number in a well, as a multiplication of a series of primes. So for our one five three nine, for for our one five three nine, if we can divide, we is clearly see that it can be divisible by three, so we can keep on divisible by three. So it will be equals to three times three times three times three times 19. Okay. Or in other words, using the notation that we have is three to the power of four times 19 to the power of one. Okay. Now, 
Now, once you write it in this form, once you write this in this form, the number of factor is given out by number of factors can be given out using this formula. The formula is that you get all the index of the prime. You get all the index of the prime. You try to it's five add, times two. Yes, you try to add it by one and then you multiply them together. Okay, so it will be equal to four plus one multiplied by our multiplied by our one plus one. So in here it would be something like this. Now the reason of it is you just count the number of factors in each term. So it will be equal to five times two and the intensity will be equal to ten. Now, of course, the another way of, of doing this is you just list out all the factors of it. And so it is not very difficult to missing out. out. The, all, the fa all the 10 factors are uh, this 1, 3, 9, 27, 50, 81, and then, and then the next part is 19, and then it will be equals to our 57, and then <clears throat> 171. And then it will be equals to to our five one three, and finally one three eight one three eight nine. So you can again by counting all this number, you will also get our answer in here, which is ten. Okay. So let's go to our question. Let's go to our question. Let's go to our question 17. Let's go to our question 17. A three digit number have a remainder of two and divided by three, have a remainder of two and divided by four, and have a remainder of five and divided by seven, oh, which is unfortunate. So what's this? What's the smallest number satisfy this, this equation? Now, whenever we, well. we see this number, we want to, now, this is a three-digit number, not just yes. 12. So, uh, well. Now, first what? of all, we want to combine the first. Now, can we? Can you find a number such that it, when it's divided by three, is two, and divided by two, is still small? Now, do not consider this first. Do not consider this first. It's 14. If the easiest number that satisfies this two conditions now is two. Now we do we have yet to consider the our last condition, right? If we want a number that's divided by three is two and divided by four is also two, then it will be equals to okay. two. But then, but then not just two, but what's the all other number? Because they after this, it will be two plus a multiple of 12, right? It, because it it after 14. if we subtract it by 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 the multiple of 12, it will have a remainder of two. So it can be either two, 14, and then you will be going to our 26, and then 48, and so on and so forth. Now, but in here, in order for it to divide by it will have we'll have a remainder of five when divided by seven, so it will be five, 12, nine, 19 and then 26, and then 30. Yeah, and then and then 33 and so on. So what is the common common digit of it? Common common values of all these conditions? Is it 26, right? 14 when divided by by seven, it is not a uh, not a it doesn't have a remainder of five okay so now here comes the base case so once we get the base case we know that our answer must be 26 plus something that thing is a common multiple of four three four and se seven because we know that the common multiple of three four and seven is three times four times seven and that is equal to 84 so it will be 
so it will be 26 times some multiple of 84. So again, by this, we can just list them all out. We can just list, list all, all the numbers all out. So it, can, it starts from our 26. And then the next one, it will be 110 and then 194 and so on and so forth. So which one is the least, is the smallest three digit number? The small three digit one number is ten. obviously well, 110. Ten. Okay, so 110 is our answer. 110 is our answer. Okay. So is there any question for question 20, question 17? Is there any question for question 17? I, because I see, I, I, I see people. Uh, Trins, is there any question for question 20, 17? Is there any question for that? If no, then we will proceed to our, to our question 18. Okay, so now let's go to question 18. The sum of two positive number A and B is 42. Find the maximum value of the product of it. And now, in here, it requires a very, very important, or well, in, important um, truth about about sum and product. If, if the sum is the same, the product is maximum when, if and only if, when the two number, Stars when the two number are close, closest, so, to, closest to each other. Closest yes. to each other, okay? So this is the most important modern mathematical fact that we will we will like to use in this in this cases. So in here, as long as we so because we know that the sum is equals to to forty two. So what are the two numbers that are closest to each other, and then their sum is forty two, which means that they must they they can be the closest to each other is that they are the same, right? If they're the same and they sum up into 42, then each of them must be 21, right? So the product, the maximum product is equal to 21 times 21 is equal to 441, okay? So 441 is our maximum, right? So then by this, we have finished the, the number the section of number theory. We have finished the section of number theory. Now let us proceed to the next part of the of the paper. The next part of the paper, our our geometry. Now how many how many triangles are there? Um, how many rectangles are there? How many rectangles are there that contains the um, two wait, two star? Uh, one, two, three. Now let us let us just draw a draw a rectangle which contains the two star and notice what's the criteria. Now notice this black this black rectangle. Now I will I will draw it using a much bolder. Yeah, notice this black rectangle. Sorry. It contains the two stars, right? It contains the two, two stars. But now let us instead of considering instead of considering this this rectangle, let us consider its four sizes. You have a red size, the left size, you have a blue, which is out his right size, you have his green, which is its top size, and we have its orange, which is its bottom size. So, what's the criteria of this four size? Let us look into our bottom. I say that the bottom can only be in this position. Why? Because they must be low enough to contain both stars, right? Suppose the bottom is in here. Then no matter what, what rectangle, what other size it will be, it will gonna contain the, the bottom stars, right? So the, in order for them to contain all two stars, the bottom must be within the lower, 
the lowest possible position of it. So there's only one way to select the bottom. How about the top? Again, if it is going to contain all two stars, the top must be above the two stars, which is this free position. So the top can only select it in this free position. How about the right? For the right, because it must be the right of all the stars, which means that it can only be selected in these two positions because it needs to be on the right of all stars. Otherwise, the, the, the right-hand side of the rectangle does not cover, is not right, it's not right enough to cover all the stars, so it will not contain the two stars, okay? Finally, let us look at the left side, the left side. And for our left side, so in here, it must be on the left of all the stars, which is a one, two, three, four, five. So there are five different positions for it. A rectangle is consists of four different sizes. So there are, so let me write it down now. We have one, we have three ways for our top. One way for the bottom. Five ways for our left. And two ways. Two ways for our three right. times one times five times two is yes, thirty. Exactly. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So we know that they are they will have exact in total, which is by the rules of multiplication, the total will be will then be equal to five times one times three times one times five times two, it will be equal to thirty. Okay. So this is question nineteen. Now let's go to question 20. Let's go to question 20. If the radius of the circle is four, then the size of the square. Oh uh, yes, so if you, if you, if you, if you are not available, you can, you may live now. And, and because this lesson is recorded, so you can rewatch the, the payover later. Okay, so now let us go to question 20. If the radius of a circle is four and the size of a square is equal to circumference of the of a circle, find the parameter of the square. But the what 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 is the what is the parameter? A parameter for a square is exactly four times the size, right? This is exactly equal to four times the size. So big, but what is the size? the size length of the square is equal to its circumference, right? So it is equals to four times the circumference. Please do not draw on the screen until I unless I told you so. Four times the circumference, right? But what is the circumference? A circumference is because the radius is equal so to- Circumference is the, uh, the, 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 the. So the, the uh, circumference the is will be equals to four. Now again, this is the four, but the circumference is equals to the pi times our pi times our our diameter. But diameter is equal to eight because its radius is equal to four. So we know that the answer will be equal to thirty-two pi. So uh, thirty-two pi is an is our answer. Now let's go to our question 21. Let's go to our question 21. How many rectangles are here? How many rectangles are, are there in the diagram? Now there are two different methods of, of counting this. There are two, two different methods of counting this. One is using inclusion exclusion principle, which unfortunately is a little bit, a little bit difficult. So instead, we will use a much more basic method, which we simply call the count, count by sizes, count by this area. 
Excuse me. Can I show? Oh, uh, uh, and may, maybe maybe let me let me, let me show them show them together show them all. Okay, so we count it by an area. So we can now, or what we count by classification. It will be a bad name. We classify this all this rectangle into the into the into all different different shape. So the basic one is the old, this the is just like this. So the, the basic one is just like this. How many of them are in here? So we one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen, fourteen. So this will be fourteen in here. So this is the most basic of all rectangle. Now after this, we have a rectangle which is. elongated combining two two rectangles side by side like this so how many of them here so we have one in here and then we have two in here three four five and then go on six seven eight nine ten eleven six seven eight nine and ten so there are ten of them for this shape, okay. Now, now, but this is not the only way of doing this. We can e be even longer. We can be even longer. Now, but for even longer, then the the things start to change. And so instead, now the the, the top part is no longer available. So the, all we have is just this one. One, two, three, and then four, five, six. Okay, so there are six of them. Four, five, six. So there's only six of them. Now we can. Something's wrong with the solution when you're is this when you mean these two squares put together wait how do i excuse me what 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 this what, what, this one is yes? it only vertically or horiz also horizontally only right. horizontally Horizon only horizontally yes only horizontally okay so, because if we consider vertically together, then it will be very, very confusing. So we want to make it simple. We, we use a simplest method. Later on, we will use a, now again, this is a four, four rectangle pairing up together. So it will be one, two, three, four. And uh, just, like, just like the one drawn in here. And finally, we have five of them pairing up to get each other. There will be only two of them. Okay, there are only two of them. So this is what we call call. Teacher, there's by... more than four. Excuse me, what is what? What do you mean? Square blocks. He's only referring to straight lines, not the square four. He's okay. only. Okay. Now, after this, we need now. These are all, all of the width equals to one. Now we would like to consider the width is equals to, width is equals to two. So let, let us consider the, the, the rectangle like this. We combine this, the rectangle up and down. So the rectangle like this. So this will be one, this will be two, three, four, five, six, and then seven, eight, nine, okay? So there will be nine of them. Another no. So after this, we will we will consider the, we could consider extending this. Now the, the later on this part is just the same as the thing that we have. So we instead of so this would be a so this would be a cross and how many of them? So it will be one. 
two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so it will be six of them. Now, now you will keep you just keep on counting them all. You just keep on counting them all. So now this method is tedious, but it is the simplest method that you can find. This is the simplest method that you can find. So again, in here, you will only find, you will find only three of them. And then later on, it will be only two and then only one. So we, you will have two in here and one in here. Now, after we count all the rectangles of with two, then we count all the rectangles of with three. Now, they, this in this case, there are not much rectangles in here. There are only two different, different sizes. One is of this and the other is of this. So we have four on our left hand side. This one has four, and they are, have two of them on the right hand side, two in here. And finally, we can find out the. A. We can find out the, the length of with four, which again, we have two different ways of writing this. We can two different ways of writing this. One of them is just yes so it will be it will be two of them in here and one of them in here now again this is not the best method of doing this but this is the simplest easiest understanding easiest to understand we classify them all and finally what we want to do is just add this number all together by adding this number all together, or what we get is the final answer, right? So for all the green, for all the rectangle, which is of length one, so it's 14 times 10 plus 10 plus six plus four plus two, so it will be equal to 36. For all the red, red rectangle, it will be nine plus six, 15, and then it will be equal to 21. For all the green, and for all the blue, it will be equal to six. And for all the or for all the orange, it will be equal to three. So our answer at the end total is equals to thirty six plus twenty one plus six 66. plus three. Okay, so it will be equals to fifty seven. Fifty seven. No, sixty six. Sixty six. Okay. Yay. Okay, so this is the answer for question 21. Now, question is a little bit tedious. Now, later on in our secondary school, we will learn about uh, the inclusion exclusion principles. We will learn about the representation and then we will, ca we will calculate it using the combinatorics coefficient, which it will, we will see later. Okay, so let's go to our question 22. Now, I'm sorry, it, it may take a little bit more time for us to finish it. So this lesson may be finished in, in roughly, roughly 55 to 40 past one, okay? So for our question 22, it's known that the length of the shortest side of a right, right angle triangle. Now, again, this is, now this is something that is very useful, uh, which we call a Pythagoras, Pythagoras theorem, Pythagoras theorem. The Pythagoras theorem says something like this. It was, if you are given that a, now, excuse me, please do not draw in first. Please do not draw in first, okay? Let me draw the, because we need to state the Pythagoras theorem first. Now, if we have a right angle triangle, if we have a right angle triangle of size A, B, and C, and it, it, same C. 
So the Pythagoras theorem says that, okay, so this three sizes, the length of this three sizes are, co are correlated. We know that the C multiplied by C is exactly equals to our A multiplied by A plus our B multiplied by B, yes. Or in other words, B squared. Now, but because we already know that A and B, what's the value of A and B? It, would, it is equal to nine and it is equal to 40. So we can, we can directly substitute into it and hence we get our, our value, which is our, the, the square of our, our hypotenuse. It is equal to nine times nine plus our 40 times 40. So it will be equal to 1681. But what is the value of 1681? 161 is exactly 41. equal to 41 times 41. So it means, so we know that our size, the square of our size is equal to the square of 41, hence our size is equal to 41. Now again, by applying Pythagoras theorem, you can very easily calculate the result of it. Okay, so for question 23, a square is found by 722 rectangles that are 1 yes. cm and 2 cm. Find a decrease in parameter in, in centimeter. Now, if we have this, if we have this, this so many, so many rectangles, what's the parameter? The parameter in this case is for for this 722 to rectangle, it will be 722 uh, multiplied to the parameter of each size. So it will be one plus two plus two. And our answer is equal to four, three, three, two. So because each of this square is each of this rectangle will have a each of this rectangle will have a parameter of this. So we need to multiply by 722. But what is the area of this? Now why we want to want to calculate area is because we want to later calculate the area of the our rectangle. It will be equal to 722 times our one times two, it is equal to one, four, 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 but one, four, 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 what is the, what is the, it is it's exactly equal to 38 times 38. So we know that the size of this square is 38 times 38. So we know that the size size of the square is equal to 38. And hence it, and hence its parameter is equals to, it's equal to 38 times four is equal to 152. So what's the difference? What's the difference between this number and this number? The difference is huge, right? The difference is equals to four a two minus one five two. It is equals to the difference is equals to four one four one eight zero. So this is our answer of 23. Okay. Now let's let's finish this question quickly as as the, the, the administrator is, is causing is actually it's actually announcing further figures below the figures formed by three cubes. The side length of the cube form the biggest to smallest are are 13 set. 13, 7, and 3 represented. What is the volume? 
but the volume is just the sum of all this, right? The volume is just the sum of the free, free, the sum of the volume of the free square. So the for, for volume of the largest cube of the largest cube is exactly equals to 13 times 13 times 13. So if we if we multiply them together, it would be equals to 2197. The volume of the of the second largest volume of the medium of the middle one, a medium cube, is exactly equal to seven times seven times seven. So the our answer will be equals to three four three. And finally, our our volume of our last cube of the smallest one. Small less cube. Of lower cube is exactly equal to three times three times three, which is equals to oh, our twenty seven. So all we need to do is just sum them all up. So the total will be will be just equals the total will be just equals to two one nine seven plus our plus our three four three plus our twenty seven. So by summing that all up, so our answer is equals to our two eight eight three. Okay. Now, unfortunately, for from the time constraint, I am afraid that we cannot finish the whole paper. But I hope you can learn something about it. Now, I will continue until the end of this lesson. Teacher, okay. will you give answer to us? Um, I'm afraid I cannot. So, but let's 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 pretend I have a book between the three distant boxes, such as every one contains at, at least one book. So again, this this question is you just try to divide it and the answer for this is the is the combinatorial solutions 9c3 9c2 which is equal to 9 times 8 divided by 2 and the answer is 36 so this one is for our question 25 for question 26 choose three Digit without repetition to form a three digit numbers. How many numbers can be divided by nine? So in order for it to be divided by nine, so this again, the sum of the digit, sum of the number must be also be divided by nine. The sum of the digit must also be di divided by nine, divisible by nine. So let us find out how many, how many numbers can we find such that is divisible by nine? So it's not that much. It would it would be as our one. Now it will be a one plus three, three plus eight. Uh, no, this is not divisible by nine. And one one plus three for four, no. One plus three is six, no. Three plus four plus six, no. The only one that, that can be is one plus six plus eight. I think it's only one plus four plus six plus eight and no others. Right, because you cannot sum them up into nine. So how many num because there's only one way of, of doing this. So the the number of way is to rearranging this this three number. So the, the number is will be used so three P three is equal to three times two times one, and hence it will be equal to six. So this is six. the answer of twenty-six. Okay, so for our 27, the number of draw in this, and I have a number of drawn so that the two number who different. So in here, we know that if in two numbers is different by, by 24, if we, for example, it will be 31 and 55, 32 and 56 and so on and so forth. Up until to our 54 and 54 and our, and our 70, 78. Okay, but we we can keep on writing it because it is 31, 55, and then it will be another different is, is 79. And then now all, notice that all numbers within the same same line, they are all different by 20, 24. So it's 79 plus 24, it will be 108, 103. And then it will be one two seven, one five one, 
and finally 170, 175. Okay, so the, now, now you can you can do you can exactly doing the same thing over and over. So it will be one two eight and then one five two and then one seventy six and so on and so forth until the last one, which is uh, one two two one one two six one five zero and one seven nine. Now in here you can see that for all the terms within the first one, because we you now again the Against every time you see that at least you will, will are thinking about the principle of the least. You are thinking about the principle, the worst case scenario, okay? You're thinking about the worst case. And hence it would be, and hence for other, our first line, you can only choose one, two, three, four, four numbers of our first, first line because it, you, you cannot choose any neighboring number, right? You can choose any neighboring number. So there's only four numbers in the first line, the four numbers on our second and, and so on until it goes to our, so, until it goes to our uh, 35. So it will be 35, 59, 83, 107, 131, 155, and then is 170. Oh, no, one. Six. Sixty, eighty-four, eight, one, three, two, one, five, nine. So all the all the numbers before that we have we can select four of them. And all numbers that is uh, that is that is more than this, we can only select it. I only select three of them. So in a total will be equals to four times our six plus our three times our, because it's 31 to 54, it would be equals to 20, 20, 25. Uh, now this is 24 of them. 24 of them minus six of them will be 18 and hence it will be equals to four plus our 18 times three, it will be 78. But 78 is the worst case scenario. So we know that we need to add one here. We need to add one here. So our answer will be equals to 79. 79 is our answer for our question 27. Okay, thank you for very much for your attendance. And this is the end of the lesson. I'm sorry because of the, of the time restriction, we, we cannot finish this paper, but I, I, will, I will rely, I will, I will count on you to finish the, the, the last three questions. Okay, thank you very much for attendance. And I will, I hope you have a wonderful, a wonderful day and, and goodbye.